I'm Sagar Loniel from the Winship Cancer Institute of Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the BCMA antibody drug conjugate. So we know that BCMA, a cell surface receptor in myeloma, is a really good target in myeloma. People using bites, bispecifics, CAR T cells, and antibodies are really excited about that target. And this is a larger phase two study evaluating the efficacy of this BCMA ADC. ADC means antibody drug conjugate in patients with relapsed and refractory myeloma. The early data on this drug in a smaller set of patients show that somewhere between 50 and 60% of patients with refractory myeloma had a response. So we're very encouraged and excited that this is an off-the-shelf potential option. One of the differences between the antibody drug conjugate and other ways to target BCMA is that what is unique about this uh, uh, molecule is it delivers an antibody to the myeloma cell and then instead of depending on the immune system to then come in and kill the cell, it has a piece of chemotherapy attached to it which gets internalized and basically directly delivers chemotherapy to the myeloma cell itself. So this is a concept that's been used in other diseases like Hodgkin's lymphoma uh, and is the f one of the first antibody drug conjugates really to have this kind of data in myeloma. One of the other unique aspects of this antibody is that unlike other immune therapies where you have to give chemotherapy associated with it, for instance for CAR T cells and you have a risk of CRS, or some of the other unconjugated antibodies such as DARA or ELO, where you have more frequent administration, or the bites and bispecifics, which may have to be given by continuous infusion, this antibody is given every three weeks, one dose every three weeks, which is very patient friendly and very straightforward because infusion reactions are not terribly common either. I think one of the other advantages of this BCMA antibody drug conjugate is that everybody's looking for that right treatment when they have relapsed and refractory myeloma. And there are lots of different potential options and everybody's clamoring for a CAR T cell. But I think practically speaking, CAR T cells don't benefit everybody. And so if you need something from a timing perspective, having something that you can do now, as opposed to waiting for a slot, waiting for production, and then you know, getting it somewhere between two and eight weeks later is really a complicated process. This represents an off-the-shelf approach for treatment. Most trials of CAR T cells are excluding prior BCMA-based therapy. Many of the bites and bispecifics that are coming down the road now are broadening their inclusion to allow prior BCMA-directed therapy. What we know from, say, lymphoma and ALL is if you respond to an anti-CD19 bispecific, you can still respond to a CAR T cell with CD19. So those are artificial barriers. I don't think it limits your ability to get those treatments in the real world. The eligibility for the trial is, uh, is really those relapsed and refractory myeloma patients, DARA resistant and IMID and proteasome inhibitor resistant as well. So it is a later line potential option, but if, it, if this holds up in terms of the larger trial, it would be one of the most active single agents we've ever seen with response rates of 50 to 60%. I mean, we just don't have a lot of new data to show at this meeting. Uh, the phase two trial is testing two different doses. And if this is successful, we hope this will lead to FDA approval.